Alrighty, you see I'm all here? I thought I'd answer a bunch of the comments that we had on the great big machine. Alrighty, so let me climb down off this because this thing is like 10 foot in the air, it feels like. That's your high power. <laughs> but anyways, I thought I would definitely answer some of your questions. Obviously, yes, this is Tom Bailey's machine. Uh, no, we have not had any kind of falling out. Tom Bailey is my friend. I'm his friend. There's no falling out. I see everybody or some people wanted to comment about that. There is no falling out. In fact, Tom is helping in this whole situation, and I'm helping in this whole situation. Um, let's see. Uh, I saw comments on the machine. Oh, this is the machine that Tom had all sorts of problems with. Uh, yes and no. Um, so you have, to, you have to be careful here. It's not... Well, here, here's the primary deal. This is not... Tom's forte. This is not Tom's deal. M making parts, machining parts, doing things like this. This isn't his deal. This is, but it is my deal. Okay. Uh, making engines, making blocks. What are we going to do with this machine? Make billet blocks. Between this machine, the Haas VF4 that's sitting over there, the Centroid that's sitting over here, all the Rottler equipment sitting right behind, we're obviously, we are going to be making all of my SMX and SMLs in house. We're making blocks. We're already making cylinder heads. We're already fix, fixing and repairing blocks. Uh, we're going to be now manufacturing them with this machine. Now, uh, problems that the machine has. Uh, I, I don't think there's any problems with the machine. I think that uh, the machine was and is uh, or was being, it just was not designed to do what it was doing so this whole trunnion table right here so if you want to jump up in here because we're not going to move it right now because i'll explain to you the problems that we're having or the which is nothing to do with haas now we'll say right off the bat the guys at eurotech have been ex extremely helpful they're here they're helping from the beginning and now there's a, a, a issue uh, from shipping that they're taking care of but let's go over one of the problems that, that is here. So this big trunnion table, okay, this thing spins around this direction in the fourth axis and spins this direction in the C axis. Now, here's, here's part of the issue, part of the, part of the deal, okay? You're gonna bolt, you're asking this big trunnion fixture, and it's a big heavy dude, this is awesome, but you're, gonna, you're asking this big fixture you're gonna put about 200 to 300 pounds worth of fixture plate on it. And then you're gonna hang 800 pound blocks. So you're up at way over a thousand, you're up to 1100, 1200 pounds hanging on this fixture, okay? Asking it to spin around and machine, asking it to turn around and machine this way, asking it to come in, flip around, over, in, have this come in and then you're asking to put a bunch of tool pressure when this thing is sideways, front ways, spinning upside down and then literally machining holes and roughing and doing a lot of, lot of work through this and never asking this to even move a thousandth of an inch. Now, before everybody gets their little panties all bunched up, it's not possible. Now, if you, if you know of and you have a uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 million dollar machine that can do that, send it over, give it to me, and we'll test it out. Until then, it really doesn't matter if there's a 20 million dollar machine that can do it, does not matter. This machine cannot do it, and most every machine, this is just not a, a practical way of doing it. You have stack up clearances. There's clearances in rotators, there's clearances down here. There's clearances everywhere that it is nearly impossible to get this thing to come back, repeat, tooling is so far away. It's just, 
This is not designed to have a 11, 1200 pound block of material twirling around on here with a boatload of pressure drilling three inch holes, uh, doing all the things that it needs to do just even to rough and then finalize and, and all that stuff. Um, so it's, uh, it's very, very difficult. So what we are working on doing, hopefully with the help of Haas, hint, Haas help out, because there's nothing wrong with this machine. We're gonna make this thing work. This thing's gonna knock out blocks. That's not the problem. Uh, could really use help because we want to make, take this trunnion off and convert this back to a regular four axis machine where it only has the turntable down here turning. That makes it a much rigid piece, takes a whole bunch of backlash, takes a whole bunch of problems out of it that from just hanging huge amounts of weight on something uh, fixes. It just fixes a lot of stuff, period. So we're working on that. Um, and I think that is honestly, that's going to do everything for it. So a little bit more about why we're going to make our own billet blocks because, uh, I just, everything takes so long. I understand there's nobody that cares more about my customers and more about my business than me. And so everybody's caring about their business, their customers. And I mean, stuff just takes long. It takes me a long time to get everything done and doing it in house is just, is just going to be the best way. What all are we going to do? We're going to do the SMX SMLs, like I already said. What else are we going to do? Uh, we will. We are going to be considering doing some stuff. To give you a, a for instance, do not call me up or send me a comment or an email thinking that we you can make your billet two uh, JZ whatever block barra block barra block or whatever, <laughs> uh, and think that I'm going to charge you ten thousand dollars. That is not the way it works. Uh, they are astronomically expensive, the design, everything. Uh, the very first billet block that you're going to build is probably going to be 50 grand. So there you go. Then they get down to in the 10, 15 grand a piece, depending on what's all there. So before you guys even ask, there's your price, there's your cost. That's what a thing is. How do you think you pay for all this stuff and time and materials and everything else? Um, so anyways, that's why we're going to do it now. Uh, so there is nothing wrong with these highest machines. It is not a $20 million machine or however much they cost uh, because it's, who's going to afford that besides aerospace or some other companies that are just astronomical amounts of money. Uh, these are good quality machines. Uh, I'm happy with them. And we're going to be able to make this all work. Again, the guys at Eurotech are doing a fantastic job helping out. So then let's get to what happened here in some shipping stuff. So right now, the Eurotech guys, you saw in the first video, talking about how this whole big trunnion table had run all the way down here to the end. What happened is it allowed this table to run over and when it ran over fast enough from turning, this thing actually goes, spins the ball screw, bing, broke the flange bearing. If you wanna jump over here, Nate. And it's nice that you can actually walk around in this thing. This thing is huge. When you look at everything, this thing is just massive. Mate's trying not to die. But this is the end of the ball screw where there's a bearing, pillow block bearing right up here. Broke that pillow block bearing that the underneath ball screw bearing, if you want to hit my hands here. So the ball screw bearing underneath this truck came in. Here's the bearing, pillow block bearing, this bearing, bang, broke this, forked up the ball screw. We don't know what's going on down here yet since we're having to going to take the trunnion off anyways they're going to take the whole truck off and then unfortunately it also has jacked up the ways so the ways are probably it hit this hard enough that the ways are out also so they're looking at the ways so uh eurotech is definitely helping on out on this uh everybody involved don't don't worry about it everybody involved is helping out in this uh crap happens it is what it is Thankfully, I'm not paying for it because it was broke when it came in my parking lot. But, uh, you know, thankfully everybody's making things right. That's cool. Um, so we have that. So that has screwed up these things. The Eurotech guys are taking everything apart, trying to figure out exactly indicating things in. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is when we have to replace this ball screw, uh, I'm not replacing it. When they have to replace this ball screw and these bearings and these cages, they have to re-laser the machine. And then they're going to have to, they're going to redo these ways, put new ways down because it's, they're bent. 
So they're going to have to put new ways in it and everything is going to get re-lasered in. They're going to send the laser guy over. So it is spot on the money. Perfect. All axes are going to work perfectly. So um, that is the little gist of that. So we are, uh, like I said, like I'm now liking to say, because you guys had some good pinky in the brain uh, references. So I really like that whole uh that whole motto i think that's really good so uh what are we doing tonight the same thing we do every night try to take over the world i'm steve morris have a great day